What? JC's making video in the daytime? <laughs> I'm normally shooting these videos from like 1 to 3 o'clock in the morning. So two videos ago, we added receivers onto our flight controllers. The last video, I showed you how to connect a beta flight and flash new firmware. So now we can go back to the receivers to finish setting everything up to be able to connect from our transmitters to the multi -rotors. At first, I'll be doing the Valorum build using the Turn IA6C receiver, but this will be also similar to any FlySky receiver, and I'm using my Turn Evolution. Just a quick reminder, uh, a couple videos ago when we wired in the receivers, I showed you how to bind them, and I also showed you the output mode I have set for iBus. The IA6C is capable of using iBus and SBus both, but I would recommend iBus over SBus because, uh, well, for a few reasons. So make sure you have that set and you already have gone ahead and bound the receiver to the transmitter. So now let's plug in a USB cable, connect a beta flight, and, and by the way, I'm going to leave you links in the description to my beta flight playlist if you haven't checked it out yet. There is just tons of videos uh, that covers everything you need to know about beta flight. Um, I'm also going to leave you links to other uh, helpful videos that we'll talk about you know, throughout this video. So. With this build and the uh, Dodo Fly Controller, let's go to the Ports tab. Just a reminder, you guys using PPM receivers, you will not turn on Serial RX for any of the UARTs. Yeah, you just leave them all turned off. You will still have to turn on telemetry if you are using telemetry, but for everything else, uh, just ignore what I'm saying. And if you remember, I did not use the UART port on the front of this fly controller, I used the one towards the rear, which was UART number 2. The one on the front is UART number 3. And because I connected my receiver to UART 2 for Serial RX, I want to turn on Serial RX for UART 2. So uh, if you did put yours on UART 3, make sure you were turning on Serial RX for UART 3. This receiver does not have telemetry, so we will not be talking about telemetry, but we will be on the next build. So for us, let's go ahead and save and reboot. Now go to configuration, scroll down. If you are using a PPM receiver on the Dodo Fly Controller and, or any other Fly Controller, because like I showed you before, they do have dedicated PPM pins, you would just leave the set to PPM and not change anything. If you are using a SBus or IBus receiver, then go to serial based receiver. And this goes for you guys using uh, Spectrum receivers as well. I know I haven't been talking about you Spectrum guys, I do apologize for that, but yeah, choose Spectrum. And if you are using a Spectrum receiver, it's going to be one of these two, depending on which receiver you have. Or it could be something else. I don't really, I haven't kept up with Spectrum receivers. Uh, but anyway, if you are using an SBus receiver, then choose SBus. I'm using iBus, so I will click iBus, and then save and reboot. Everything should be set up now. To test it, go to the receiver tab. And I'm going to move my little joysticks around on my transmitter. Roll pitch, y'all, and throttle should all be moving on your screen. If you have created any switches already, then go ahead and test those out now. I'm not going to cover how to create switches because I've already done that. That's actually part of my Turn G Evolution playlist. I'm going to leave you a link to that one, as well as uh, you guys using the FreeSky QX7 or X9D. I'm going to leave you that playlist as well. So. That way you can go ahead and watch those videos and create your switches and get them up and running. The next thing I'm going to do is notice how much jitter I'm getting on these channels. So on this one, it's going between 89 and 90. This one's between 74 and 75, which is pretty good. So that's a value of 1. Whatever value it's twitching between, I take that and then I add 2. So that will give me a total of 3. So in RC Deadband, I'm going to type in 3 because a jitter of 1 plus 2 gives me 3 and then click save. The next thing you want to do is calibrate your channel endpoints and if you are using a Turn G Evolution with iBus or even if you are using SBus uh, and you have updated the firmware of your Turn G Evolution then you actually don't have to calibrate channel endpoints. It's already done for you and what I'm talking about is no matter what transmitter you have, no matter what receiver you have, you always want 1500 in the middle. So if I center all my sticks, my roll is slightly off. I need to calibrate that uh, through the transmitter, but for the most part, I'm getting 1500. 
Then if I move my sticks to the minimum value for all four channels, which is going to be the bottom left, I'm getting a thousand for all four of them. And then the top right, I'm getting two thousand for all four of them. And that's exactly what you want. It doesn't have to be exactly one thousand, two thousand. I would say it can be off by as far as four. So 1996 to 2004, that's what you want. Just get as close to 1,000 and 2,000 as you possibly can. Now for you guys uh, that do have to calibrate your channel endpoints, like I said, look in the description below. I'll leave you links to those videos. And that's gonna do it for this one. So let's go ahead and hop on over to the other build. So on this build, we're using the Omnibus F4 and I've got a FreeSky X4 RSB. Uh, connected Things to it but this setup is going to be exactly the same for any other X series receiver like the XSR the XM XM plus so on so on so let's connect go to ports and on this one because we use the dedicated S bus pin which is the same thing as UART number one it's actually tied in and shared with UART one we want to turn on serial RX4 UART1. That's also the only UART that has the hardware inverter that I talked about in that other video. Then for telemetry, uh, for you guys that didn't watch that video, just know that I did do a hardware modification to uninvert, well, basically, yeah, uninvert the telemetry signal from these receivers because we have no more hardware inverters. Uh, so just go back and watch that video. And we used UART number six for telemetry. So for UART six, under telemetry output, uh, even though this is a FreeSky receiver, the X series of receivers actually use smart port telemetry, not FreeSky telemetry, where uh, the D4R2 and a few others use FreeSky. So the XSR, the X4RSB, and uh, the X8R, all of those are going to use smart port. And that's it. So let's save and reboot. The it's going to reset like this and go back to the Bay of Flight main screen. That's actually normal whenever you're using flight controllers that have a virtual COM port where the Dodo does not, so that's why it doesn't reset like that. But just know that that is normal. Now let's go to configuration. And by the way, uh, you guys using PPM on either one of these types of flight controllers doesn't matter. You are not going to do anything on this ports screen. Unless you do have telemetry, you will set telemetry, but you will not turn on zero RX for anything. Then for configuration, uh, if you are using a PPM receiver, then just once again select PPM and save, and you're done. If you are using uh, anything else, like you Spectrum guys, then select serial based receiver, and us Free Sky guys are going to choose S Bus. Then save and reboot. Now I'll go to receiver to test everything. When I move my sticks, roll, pitch, y'all, and throttle are moving on the screens. I can. As a kid, as a wife. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, test any switches out. So I'm good there. Once again, I'm going to take note of how much jitter I'm getting, which is almost none. I'm getting it one right there so uh, if I were getting absolutely nothing I would just do two in both of these but I am getting a little bit so I'm just going to go ahead and do three and three is three is a safe number to use either way so click save I have already gone ahead and calibrated my channel endpoints so if I go to the bottom left I'm getting a thousand top right I'm getting two thousand and in the middle I'm getting right on 1500 so uh, once again, look in the description, you'll find that video where I show you how to do that. Now for telemetry, let's go back to configuration, scroll down, and make sure that telemetry is turned on here. If you did have to turn it on, then save and reboot. Oh, one other thing I did forget to uh, mention, if you do want voltage in your telemetry, make sure VBAT is turned on, and if you do want uh, if you have added in a current sensor, this flight controller does not have a built-in current sensor, but if you did add one in, then make sure you turn on current meter. Also, you will have to calibrate your current uh, sensor, and I do have a video showing you how to do that in my beta flight playlist. So I'm going to leave this turned off. I do want voltage though, and I'm going to save and reboot. We don't have to connect to beta flight but I do need power going to the receiver so I'm just going to leave the USB cable plugged in 
for you free sky guys uh, go to your model then this page button hold it down and then you'll go backwards a page hold it down again and we're now on the telemetry page then scroll down and click discover new sensors once it's done click it again to stop discovery and there is your telemetry sensors now I'm not getting voltage voltage is going to show up as VFAS VFAS if you're not seeing VFAS it's because you don't have a battery plugged in so let me go ahead and do that if I click on discover new sensors again there's VFAS and that's my voltage you do also have to calibrate your voltage it's usually not off by much I mean we're only talking like maybe a hundred milliamps or one-tenth of an amp sometimes two but I do have a video showing you how to calibrate your voltage uh, in my beta flight playlist and that's gonna do it guys uh, I do apologize for redirecting you to a bunch of different videos but uh, there's really no sense in me redoing those videos and it also cuts down on the time of these videos so I hope you understand but thanks for watching and I'll see you again in, in the next video